Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I will be reviewing and doing an overview and build video for this very cool new model made by Anomaly Drones. It's called the Dragon. They have two new models. This is the Dragon and they also make them Manted. And I will be looking over this interesting new model because I think it has a bunch of really cool features that we haven't seen in mini quad designs before. So these are a couple of aerospace engineers that have designed this model and the design makes a lot of sense. It's not just another run-of-the-mill design with a typical quadcopter layout for the racing quad style quadcopter that has you know the double stacked plates, the X-frame, you know they're all starting to look similar these days. And this one is quite a bit different for a few reasons. First, um, it's got, you know, it's got some out of the box thinking that actually makes sense. It's not just, hey, let's make something that looks different. This has been designed with some physics in mind, some of the flight characteristics in mind. And there's some very cool things about this thing that I'd like to show you. One is that it was designed for the ProSight system from Amamon. And that's one of the first low latency digital FPV systems available. And this model was designed to accommodate that expressly. Additionally, this was designed to work with the KISS flight controller and speed controls. Uh, actually, any flight controller will fit, and other speed controls could be used, but it was designed to use the KISS system perfectly, and you'll see why when I take the canopy off. And if we just look at this model, we'll see that it's got some very interesting features. First of all, when you, when you get the model, it comes pre-assembled like this, with the exception of the antenna holders but it comes with the parts already fitted so that you know everything is going to fit together the way it should. It uses very high quality carbon with a really nice finish and the canopy here provides protection for the internal components and everything fits with inside the canopy obviously except for the motors and antennas, propellers and such. But the speed controls fit inside, the battery even fits inside. If we look underneath there's a cavity here for the battery to fit inside the frame. And it may stick out a little bit, but if essentially it's very close to the center of gravity in the machine, lowering the polar moment of inertia, helping performance. As you know, the closer we keep things to the center of gravity of the machine, the better the performance because of the reduction of the polar moment of inertia. So the machine will be able to change direction more quickly and the flight controller and the rest of the systems don't have to work as hard. So it makes sense. This canopy is made of PLA, so it's, it's fairly rigid material. It provides cooling through the camera hole, and there's an exit vent in the rear of the machine there. So you do have airflow through, which is a question that may come up considering you've got your ESCs inside. And the Anomaly Drones folks have done a lot of testing on this machine and found that there isn't any issues with cooling the ESCs inside. There's plenty of air through airflow through the machine. You can see there are a couple other areas where air can enter and exit to some small um, spaces here. And the battery doesn't have a cover that goes over it, so you still get some airflow over the battery. So I'm going to take the canopy off now so you can see how this little guy is put together. And you'll see it's got a very clever design. The canopy is very easy to remove, so I'll do that now so we can look at the internal components using a couple of screws, one at the front and one at the back. Remove the canopy, we see the internal components here, or the internal structure that holds the components. So at the front, obviously, the camera mount, the ProSight transmitter goes on top and it's pocketed to protect the transmitter. And on either side, there are two pockets for the ESCs. And how it works is you put the ESCs in there and then you tighten down these screws and it provides a little bit of clamping force top to bottom here. Now this is made of NinjaTech Cheetah, which is a flexible 3D printed material. So things have a little bit of give here, which is good for vibration damping and also crash protection. So things can flex a little bit. It's nice. That includes the antenna holders for the Amamon ProSight system. And they have tried both PLA 
and cheetah material here and found that the cheetah material holds up better in crashes. Anything that sticks up on a mini quad of course takes quite a bit of abuse and in their testing they've shown that the flexible kind works better. However, both are available. Now, the camera mount here is adjustable and can work from angles from 0 to 45 degrees. The ESCs, like I said, clamp into place here and then the flight controller and PDB will mount right back here. There have been some questions as to whether having the flight controller behind the rotation or center of mass makes a difference. And it has been shown that there is little to zero effect in, in real world flying. I'm not worried about it, but if you think it's a concern, let me know. I think it'll be just fine. Now if we take a look on the underside again, look at some of the interesting details they provided here. Check out this connector mount. They've got a 3D printed little fairing here with the XT60 right there. So you just slip your battery in there and they provide some Velcro to go on the bottom surface here to retain the battery. And so you just plop your battery in, plug up your connector, tuck your balance lead in there and your battery is mostly protected during flight. As you can see the motor wires go through these little grooves here and then come up through the other side and go to the ESCs. So the wiring for this will be a little bit different than you'd see on a standard mini quad. And I'll go through the installation of all these components so you can see how it works out. Some of the other interesting details here, look at the little pockets for the motors, provides a little bit of protection on the lower bell and windings of the motor. Now these holes here that the wires go through, they will need to be chamfered, I think. As you can imagine, wires passing through a carbon plate they're going to want some protection. I chamfered this one very slightly, but I think I'm going to take a file and smooth it out a little bit more, both on the underside and on the top, just so that the, the wires have a nice smooth kind of bend to go around. But as you can see, they've done a lot of thinking about how they want the wiring layout to be here and how it can be smooth against the bottom. They recommend a small spot of glue just to keep the wires in place roughly around the middle here. I may try a piece of tape over it, try a couple different things to see what makes it look nice and keep the wires flush. A couple of other interesting details here. They provide little landing feet, also 3D printed out of PLA. And it's not just that they provide a little foot by itself, but they provide a little foot. And the foot is actually, if you can see that, the foot is actually notched out so that a little neoprene pad can fit inside there just like that into a little pocket. I have to figure out what the orientation is on these but suffice it to say it's got a nice little landing foot with a neoprene pad. The neoprene pads are pretty popular. I've used them on my Alien and they hold up pretty well. They keep the bottom off the ground. They provide a little bit of a cushion for landing and these guys are pretty tough so if you go skidding along the concrete they don't immediately deteriorate. Anomaly Drones does recommend a little spot of glue in there to help hold this in, I guess, because this material does tend to be a little bit slippery. So as you can see, a lot of thought has been put into the design of this machine. It wasn't just thrown together with a couple of carbon plates and standoffs. All this was done in a CAD tool to make sure that all the parts fit. And I will be, you know, double checking that all that stuff goes together and I'll let you guys know if I have any trouble, but I don't anticipate any difficulties. I did trial fit the ESCs in there and they slipped right in, no problem. Like I said, if you tighten that little screw, it kind of puts a little bit of downward pressure on there. But again, this is a soft sort of rubbery material, so you're not you're not gonna damage your ESCs by just, just putting a little bit of force on there to hold them at the edge. So lastly, let's just look at this thing again with the canopy on in place. And let's just think about the differences between this and a standard mini quad. Look at the aerodynamic profile of this guy. Even when it's tilted forward, the way we do when we fly, this thing is tilted way forward. This machine is going to have much less aerodynamic drag than your standard mini quad. And that's going to be an advantage. The aerodynamics of a standard mini quad are terrible. And these guys have thought about that. You know, this provides some abduction in aerodynamic drag and also protection in a crash. And I think it makes a lot of sense and I'm really looking forward to flying this guy. 
So lastly, let's look at some of the components we'll be installing here. I have my ProSight camera, which will slip right in there. The screws are even provided, and they're actually plastic screws, if I believe, so it's something that could prevent damage to the camera in a crash if the lens were to impact something like this one has. We've got our ProSight transmitter, which just slots right into the top. Let's make sure we get the video in toward the front. And that guy just fits right in there. You can see, if you can tell here, those holes line right up and they provide the hardware for that. And then, of course, we'll install the ProSight antennas back here. And then I've got myself a set of Lumineer motors. These are the 2206, 2350 kV motors. I like these a lot because they pull a reasonable amount of current. They provide good performance, they're lightweight, and they don't try to pull 30 amps out of a 24 amp ESC. And I can't afford to run the most expensive batteries on the market. And I'm not sure my batteries can handle 100 amps, or I'm sorry, 120 amps, or whatever it may be from some of the newest motors. I prefer to have a few minutes of runtime as opposed to going 110 miles an hour, but that's just personal preference. This is what I'll be using. Now what I have done here is I've extended the motor wires because as you probably have noticed, this machine is going to need slightly longer wires, especially in the case of the rear motors because they go underneath the arms, come back out, and then come forward to the to the rearward ESC which will be mounted right there. So I just I just took it upon myself to snip the wires here add longer wires and I just use the same gauge wire that the Luminear motors came with. And then of course we need a PW, uh, PDB rather so I chose the Luminear PDB. It's a very simple unit. I'll probably cover the bottom with electrical tape or put little washers underneath it to keep it off the carbon and mount that in place and then the KISS flight controller. This one came out of another machine so it's sort of been pre-wired. I've got a buzzer on it so I do need to think about this a little bit and where I'm going to mount the buzzer. Oh, and I almost forgot about the receiver. That's this plug here. So I've got a FreeSky XSR. And when I talked with the Anomaly, Anomaly Drones people about this, they said that they just mount their receivers to the inside of the canopy, which seems reasonable. Although, I wonder if I could just mount it here on this little shelf or somewhere. I do have to keep this, this stack low here because the canopy is a little bit low in the back. As you can see here, it slopes down. But if you look at it from the side, I don't know if I can get exactly that angle, but if you look at it from the side, there's actually quite a bit of height here. So I don't think I'll have any, any problems. And uh, as I've said, this was, this was all designed to use these components, including the ProSight and the KISS suite and a PDB. Um, so it should all fit without a problem. And so I think this concludes this video for the uh, general overview of the Anomaly Drones Dragon. And in the next video, I'll start the build. I'll start to install the various components. I'll show you how I go about figuring out how to make everything fit properly. And I like to keep wires tidy. And so I will probably spend some time talking about that. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys find this as interesting as I do. I think this is one of the most clever designs to come along in a while. It's not just a copycat uh, mini quad design and I think it's going to fly really well. So we'll see how it goes and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.